Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, today's video is going to be a little different. I'm going to kind of do a little ranting and raving at the preppers out there. You know, all those preppers out there. What I'm seeing at some of our technicians tests and uh, also the classes for technicians are a lot of preppers what I think are preppers uh, showing up for the classes which is a good thing uh, but what I also see happening is uh, they never upgrade their license uh, after they've gotten their technicians tests they seem to think that once you have that technician's test, you know all about amateur radio. Now, I'm going to, and what they also do is they immediately go out and they buy one of the toy amateur radio pieces of equipment like you see on the back here, one of these handy talkies. They'll go out there and buy them one and think they have got the communications problem solved for the next EMP burst. And that's just not true. What they actually, in putting it in the gun mode of prepping, they just went out and bought a BB gun and are now going to venture out where the zombies are with their BB gun. That's a great analogy to what they just did with the tech license and the handy talkie. That handy talkie is really used for working through a repeater or a repeater system of some kind. Now in a grid down situation, those repeaters, most of them are not on backup power. Some of them are, but now you're at the, uh, you hope they keep the generator going or the repeater will go down, but most of them are not on backup power. So more than likely, your local repeater will go down immediately uh, if there's a grid down situation. So your little handy talkie will only be good for line of sight for a few miles. Yes, you can use it to communicate with your local prepper group. No question about that. But you will not be able to do any what's called long distance communication, which may be critical in a grid down situation where you can talk to other amateur radio operators across the USA or even around the world. But more than likely you'd be talking to other ham radio operators within your state or region. You can't do that with a handy talkie. You really can't. So uh, I'd encourage you to go back, get yourself a general license. Now, what that'll do for you is it'll give you a little more knowledge and the permission to get on the HF bands, which are long distance. And by doing that, now you have the opportunity to do some practicing. Sort of like uh, getting a concealed carry. You know, you go take that all-day class, you go to the shooting range, fire a few rounds, and they give you a concealed carry. Now, are you really a gun expert at that point? No, absolutely not. You have to practice a lot, right? Same thing goes for amateur radio. You've got to practice some to be able to operate in a grid down situation uh, so that you have good communications. Yeah, those little handy talkies will work for your group scattered about the woods. Yeah, they're going to work. But if you want to find out what's going on in Washington State, 
or in Florida or in Georgia or someplace else uh, in the state that you happen to be in, those HTs will not do you any good. Again, the most of the uh, repeaters will be down in a uh, grid down situation. We need to talk to a minute about EMP. There's a lot of bad information about EMP and the horrific situation that will place us in. Yeah, it's going to tear up some stuff, but it's not going to tear up everything. Most of the electrical engineers I've talked to say that most of the cars that are not running, that are parked, will still be usable after an EMP event, as though nothing has happened. Most of the computers not running will probably still be usable after an uh, EMP event. Now, will all the cell towers be up? Probably not. They're running. All right. Maybe, maybe not. So cell phones are probably not going to be very reliable after an EMP or might not work at all. Uh, but... Uh, if you got your phone turned off, all right, it's more than likely that it'll turn back on again, all right? So radios are going to work, cars are going to work, some of them, and electronics are going to work, some of them, all right? It's not going to be this 95% of everything doesn't work. It's probably going to be more like 25% of everything doesn't work. Now, that's a lot of cars. That's a whole lot of cars, all right? 300 million cars, one quarter of that, you know? That's a bunch of cars that don't work anymore, but it leaves a bunch of cars that do work. So it's not going to be quite as bad as uh, the uh, apocalypse... Uh, that you're, that's on the internet all the time. It's not going to quite be that bad. It'll be bad. And you'll still be able to use your radio. So, your amateur radio. If it's not turned on. <laughs> and I'm hoping that my car that's parked in the garage that has a mobile radio inside of it parked in the garage will still operate after an EMP. Keeping my fingers crossed. Probably will. More than likely will. So I'll have a mobile radio in the car. So, which I can get out a whole lot further than you can with that handy talkie. Now, to talk long distance at low power, because you're probably not going to be operating an amplifier. Even if you have some sort of backup power, uh, you're probably not going to be using an amplifier. You're just going to be using a regular HF radio. To talk long distances reliably, more reliably than voice, you need to learn the digital modes in amateur radio. Ready, old time decades old radio teletype called RITTY, R-T-T-Y. You can Google all these and read about them, R-T-T-Y. Uh, you need to learn F-L-Digi, F-L-Digi, D-I-G-I. -I. It's a free software program that decodes most all the digital modes, most all of them. You need to learn JT65, JT65. You need to learn PSK31. Those are going to be the modes that are going to be used uh, after a grid down. There'll be some voice, but a lot of it will be low power transmissions digitally. They travel further with less power. All right. So if you know nothing about it, you're going to be cut out of all those communications that might be going on that you want to 
talk to or hear about. He might be. And I got a call coming in. So let me turn it off and see if I can finish this video. <laughs> anyway, cell phones, I love them. <clears throat> you need to learn those digital modes. And the only way to learn them is to get your general ticket and start practicing operating voice, digital, CW, if Morse code, if that's what you want to learn, that's fine. You've got to operate and practice or you're going to be lost in a real grid down situation with your little handy talkie. It won't do you a lot of good. All right. Will not. And you could accomplish the same thing without taking a license. Just get a CB radio. You'll be able to talk a few miles to all your buddies that are in your prepper group, but you won't be able to talk in any further than that. So not necessary to get a technician's license, but if you want to be able to communicate long distance, know what's going on, be able to talk to somebody in another state with no infrastructure except your equipment, then you're going to have to get your general ticket and start practicing long distance communications. There's no other way. You have to practice it. You cannot read about it in a book and then put everything together out in the field somewhere and get on. You won't know what you're doing. Uh, you're going to have problems even with the buttons on the radio. There's myriad buttons on the radio that you don't know what they do. So it's, it's very doubtful. In fact, I would even go so far to say that if you jumped on an HF radio and didn't know what you were doing and put up some kind of wire antenna and didn't know what you were doing and started transmitting, the radio would fail within the first day. Now, you can ask me why would it fail? It would burn up the transistors in it for a particular reason, all right? But you got to study to know what that particular reason is. Anyway, more than likely, you're going to have radios after an event, an EMP event, grid down. You're going to have a car, going to have a computer. Whether the cell phones work or not might be intermittent. Some towers may still be up. Some towers may not be up. Hit and miss. So get that general ticket. Learn about the HF frequencies. HF frequencies. Operate on the HF frequencies. And then you'll be really prepared for a grid down communications wise. Communications wise. No different than practicing with a firearm. No difference, okay? Just you're practicing with a radio. So with that said, I hope I kind of gave you an incentive to continue on with your uh, amateur radio studies. Go out there and take a study and take a general test and then Find yourself a real low-cost HF radio. really doesn't matter what you find. Learn how to operate it. <clears throat> Learn how to put up an, an antenna. Learn how to operate portable. Portable with no mains power. And you'll be in great shape to be able to communicate if there really is a EMP grid-down situation ever happens. Or if there's just a normal emergency, uh, widespread earthquake, you know, forest fires, whatever it might be, you'll have a real good idea of how to set up portable stations and get the communications you need to hear uh, to know if you're in danger or not uh, and to be able to communicate uh, with other people. So with that said, I wish you clear skies.
and 73. And remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. See y'all later. Everybody be good.